heart failure is a condition in which the uh, the pumping of the heart is uh, affected so much that it is not enough to provide um, blood flow to the metabolic needs of the body and it's a progressive disease and uh, affects a very large number of people the world over. The incidence of heart failure is increasing worldwide because of the fact that people are now living longer as compared to say 50 years ago. To a large extent heart failure can be managed with medications and lifestyle changes but unfortunately a small percentage of patients are left with a heart which is functioning so poorly that the only option is uh, to change the heart and do a heart transplantation. While this procedure has been around for the last 40 years, uh, the number of hearts available for a transplant is limited and for the last three decades or so, the number of transplants done worldwide has been stagnating at around 5,000. Um, so what are the other options uh, in case the heart is too feeble and a transplant is not possible? Fortunately, because of modern technology, um, small pumps have been developed. The heart, after all, is nothing but a biological pump. And small pumps such as these have been developed, uh, which are pretty small. They are around 150 to 160 grams in weight. And they are implanted within the chest cavity into the heart itself. And the pump draws blood from the heart and pumps it back into the rest of the body. Uh, the difference from a normal heart uh, and this pump is that these pumps are uh, not pulsatile. That means there's no pulse. These pumps uh, continuously suck blood out of the heart and pump it to the rest of the body. So in effect, these patients won't have a palpable pulse. And uh, measuring blood pressure uh, requires a Doppler measurement. Having said this, um, the output from these pumps is as good as you would get from a normal heart. So uh, patients with advanced heart failure who could barely walk a few feet, a few yards, can live a full uh, and productive life. Uh, they can uh, exercise as much as a normal person uh, and uh, do all the other normal activities uh, appropriate to their age group and their um, hobbies. Um, the, and as compared to a transplantation, they don't uh, need to be on multiple medications. The only drug required is a blood thinning drug to keep uh, the clotting mechanism of the body slightly at a slightly higher level. The um, blood pump requires a power source and so there's a small cable like this which comes out of the body outside. And this is connected to a controller and to a battery system. So at night when the patients are sleeping, it can get charged but through the mains. And during the rest of the day, you get, you get almost a 16 to 18 hours of battery life. So it means that you can go to work and attend to your normal activities. And um, even though initially the pumps were uh, developed as a bridge to transplantation and were meant to work for six months to one year. Increasingly now with more and more experience we have shown that these pumps are capable of functioning for 10 to 15 years with excellent outcomes. Uh, so I think it's been a very significant advance in this technology and uh, it's bound to help patients worldwide with advanced heart failure who are staring at death or an extremely poor quality of life. This device can change their lives in very significant ways.